coming here from your playing career? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we played uh, in the finals in 96 and uh, we, we played the middle three games here and won the first one uh, pretty easily and went up 3-0 and, uh, and then the Sonics came back and won the next two and made, made us pretty uncomfortable. But, uh, you know, those just the memory of that series, uh, the 96 championship, uh, it's a great, great memory. A great man series? Um, a lot of confidence on the floor. <laughs> Is there another word besides confidence in that work? <laughs> Perhaps one you'd choose to use, but uh, I'll just stick with confidence. <laughs> Steve Martin, Dean Barry, music group. How was the uh, visit with Pete Carroll today? And what came well, it was out great. Overall? It was great. Yeah, we had fun. Um, it's a good, good way to mix things up a little bit. Instead of having to shoot around, uh, we just went over and visited with the Seahawks in their, their meeting and saw their facility through the football around a little bit, and uh, it was uh, it was really interesting. I think our guys really got a kick out of it, and uh, we really appreciated you know, the invitation from Coach Carroll and the, and the players, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Steve, how much do you look forward to seeing how Kevin is, is greeted and cheered and, and appreciated tonight? Yeah, I think that's what tonight's about, honestly, is, uh, you know, Kevin, he represents kind of the, um, the last season of the Sonics and, and um, hopefully the return and, and uh, someday, however that happens. And uh, I know he's going to be uh, given a, a huge ovation and uh, he's got his green shoes ready and uh, it's going to be really fun to, to be part of that. Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve, I could be wrong here, but I know, I figure since it's a preseason game, you might be willing to tell us who's going to start, and also give us an idea of what you want to accomplish with your rotations. Um, actually, I would tell you this is this is the truth, uh, but since we didn't have shooter on, I haven't even told the people who are starting that they're starting. So I think it would be disrespectful if they found out uh, on their phone. So I'm going to go you know, talk to the players who are starting after, after this. Um, I'm going to play everybody. All 15 guys who are available will play. Our young guys have done a phenomenal job in camp. It's been one of the best training camps. Uh, it's been the best training camp uh, that I've been a part of with the Warriors in our five years in terms of uh, the energy, the execution, the poise. Um, it's been drama-free. Practices have been great. Uh, and the, the young guys have a big part in that. Uh, it's a great crop of, of uh, energetic, smart, hustling players, and I want to reward them uh, with some playing time tonight. Hey, you had some playing experience under Lenny Wilkins. Yeah. Could you describe that a little bit? Yeah, Lenny was uh, fantastic. I played for him in Cleveland uh, from 89 to 92. And uh, Lenny really was the first coach to give me a chance in this league. And, um, you know, it was my second season. My first year was in Phoenix. I didn't play much, nor did I deserve to play much. But I got a chance under Lenny, and uh, I loved playing for him. We had a really good team. Brad Doherty, and Larry Nance, Mark Price, that group. And uh, learned a lot from Lenny. Um, practices were streamlined and crisp. And we didn't run a lot of offense, but what we did run, we ran really well. Um, so we executed like crazy. And I learned that. It's something that I have taken with me in my own uh, coaching philosophy. Uh, don't have a thousand plays. You know, have, have a few pet plays and, and uh, make sure you execute those really well. And it's easier to find an offensive rhythm that way. And that's, that's uh, where Lenny really was, uh, I thought, as good as it, as it came in the NBA as far as coaching was concerned. Steve, I talked to Ron Adams yesterday to congratulate him on being named the top NBA assistant for the fourth straight year. And he just talked for a minute about how, uh, how he's changed since he's been here and that you've influenced that. And I was just wondering from your end, uh, can, have you seen him change? And also, how has he influenced you as a coach? Yeah, I think it's been a great marriage, really. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I hired Ron four years ago was I needed his experience. I needed somebody to, uh, you know, 
know, just tell me, hey, look, this isn't going to get it done. You know, we've 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 got to get some work in here. We got to do this. We got to do that. But I knew Ron. You know, everybody just told me Ron is a truth teller. He's gonna he's gonna give it to you straight. And um, so I think I think we've influenced each other really well. He's been um, the guy who sometimes will put the brakes on for me and say, hey, you know, don't forget about you know, this drill or, or this scheme that we need to work on. Um, and I've probably loosened him up a little bit um, with uh, the way we conduct our, our practices. And, and uh, more than anything, I love being around Ron. love having dinner with him and drinking wine and talking politics and, uh, and sports and life. And uh, so he's been a great companion and a great coach for us. Steve, Doug Eberhart, Global TVBC. Uh, just wondering how your non-playing free agent Rick Celebrini is fitting in with your uh, fitting in with your staff. Rick's been great. Um, you know, we, uh, we lost uh, Chelsea Lane to Atlanta, and it was a big hole to fill. And um, we lost Mike Err as well. A couple key guys, a couple key figures in our in our training staff, and we were very fortunate to to find Rick and to hire Rick. And he subsequently hired um, part of the, the rest of the staff, and we're really happy with the way it's all unfolding. Um, Rick was key in Steve Nash's development and growth as a player. Um, great on-court movement coach. I think he's he's really been making strides with Demarcus. It's a good pairing with what Demarcus is facing. And uh, yeah, Rick Rick is top notch. We're lucky to have him. Steve. Yeah. With as much as Rick Waltz has done at Hall of Famer, you've worked with him a lot. And can, can you envision him at 16, running around, taking care of the Sonics jerseys and, and having the keys to the building? Yeah, and, boy and all that. It's just, you know, it, it's so amazing to be able to experience that as a kid when you love a sport so much, to be a part of the team. And he was a big part of the Sonics. Great, thank you. Thanks. We'll have uh, Katie over here.